Uh, today, I'm sharing about my journey in astronomy, which happened 16 years back. That time, I was studying BSc physics in Trichandra campus. When we talk about astronomy, we had very nice sky. During that time, when graduated with BSc physics from Trichandra campus, we used to have a power cut. We call it load setting. And probably that was one of the inspiration for me to go into the field of astronomy. We have a dark skies, still we have. And we were discussing about our ideas, how we can do something in the country, utilizing the available resources here. We all know the situation this we faced. Probably most of us have seen this. So how many of you remember the power cut that we faced during those times? There was an article, the feature article, by Nepali Times, published in April 2018. It's illustrated about the power cut situation in Nepal. It provided us to look into the sky and in fact for me like during those days I managed to enjoy the Milky Way, our home galaxy, right from this Kathmandu Valley. That is not the situation these days thanks to Nepal Electricity Authority. We don't have any power cuts these days after 2018, at least the scheduled one. So today I'm here to share you my journey through astronomy, particularly doing outreach and education, going different places from Nepal to abroad and sharing what I know in this field. Let's get back to why I want to do this astronomy. I call it power of astronomy. The astronomy itself is not the study of stars and galaxies. It gives us a sense of being who we are in the vast universe. But I was more curious to go with the essence, with the, the aspirations it gives us to go into the further in my life. It actually gives an impactful situation. You know, it only not provides us to study the stars and galaxies, but also it provides you an opportunity to inspire people, to ignite curiosity, and to unite people from different backgrounds, different work of lives, and to, uh, to go for their, you know, the values uh, in their life. That's why, you know, I use this astronomy as, as my career path, I would say, and I was so fascinated about it uh, in my life. The night sky that we had an opportunity due to the power cut and the ongoing situation that I just graduated from my bachelor's degree with physics and I was discussing with ideas with my colleagues that led to a new direction in my life. In 2008, rather than going for the master's degree, I took a gap year to focus more on astronomy. I explored different aspects, what we can do, right, staying here and looking for creating more opportunities for people. I can, you know, I, wa I was looking for ways and I found that discussing with the friends, we formed a small group uh, in Trichandra campus then which started discussing these ideas. We were just graduated waiting for our results and uh, then we had a discussion and I took a gap to focus on it. Then we started exploring the different aspects. So we thought we should travel. Astronomy actually gives you then, you know, broader perspective. It gives you your place in the universe, the tiny little human being and the vast universe. So we started traveling to India. Our first travel was in India. We attended, along with a few of my friends, attended an astrophotography workshop there where we met a lot of people, mainly astrophotographers, whom we invited to visit Nepal. Because we had that, you know, the situation, enjoying the night sky here, enjoying the beauty, and seeing Milky Way right from here. 
So we call it as a dark sky as our astronomical heritage. In 2008, we went there, and 2009 was another remarkable year for us because it was the year of international year of astronomy. We call it International Year of Astronomy IYA 2009. It was a global initiative by International Astronomical Union and UNESCO to inspire people to rediscover their presence in the vast universe. Also, to generate the sense of uh, humanity connecting from all corners of the world. It was also for the celebration of 400th anniversary of the first recorded observations, astronomical observations tele by telescope by Galileo Galilei. And also in, uh, in coincidence with the Nicolas Copernicus Astronomia Nova published in 17th century. So the celebration was marked and established to do that, but it also inspired people across the globe to you know, check our presence in the vast universe and to connect regardless of our borders, geographic distributions, you know, the locations, and it was a remarkable one. So I call it the IYA 2009, the year 2009 is a special year in my life. In 2009, for, to promote our, this astronomical heritage as a dark sky, we collaborated with different groups uh, from the world. We work with the wall at night, which produces wonderful pictures of the night sky, connecting with the heritage site and landscape. They are more focused on landscape astrophotography. And also to the documentary team from Canada who were making films about night from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Fortunately, I got an opportunity to work with that team for their interest to shoot the astronomical part in Nepal. We choose Panauti, Bhaktapur, Kathmandu to have the beautiful night sky portrait and it was features, one of the features, photo features one here as well. So you can see this, the International Year of Astronomy, now we call it Beyond IYA. This picture is taken from Panauti. The Inresu Temple, you can see the backdrop, the nice star trails and it was filmed during a part of this documentary shooting. I think that led people to see the beauty through those works. So there was a report in the website by Tuan as well, and it was the initiative uh, by IYA 2009. In 2010 and 11, so we worked with different astrophotographers from around the world. We particularly worked with different people who we met through different events, and uh, I, Take an opportunity. I would like to add this photo because it's kind of quite famous, I think. Everyone knows about it from National Geographic. It was in 2016. This photo was posted by National Geographic saying that Nepal is one of the top five destinations for stargazing. And it was by Jeff Dye. The story goes back to 2015 when we were coordinating with him for his astrophotography journey from Nepal. I personally got an opportunity to coordinate with him and collaborate so that he can go to the Sagarmatha National Park and create such beautiful photos which was used by the National Geographic in 2016. This is another photo by my colleague Manish Adwa from Nagarkot. These days, it's pretty hard to see Milky Way from Kathmandu because we don't have load settings, power outages. But if you go a little far away from here, on the countryside, it's still visible. You can go there, and during nights, if there's no cloud, you can enjoy the beauty of the Milky Way. This is another picture that I'd like to share with you all. This is the composite image of the meteor shower that we did from the Dhampus in Gandaki province. In fact, we were not able to capture the scene that we have witnessed there. It was a beautiful moment. We counted more than 400 meteors per hour that night. And not only collaborating with international astrophotographers to generate the content to inspire people, we are also using our people, our contents that create such images and help people to know about our sky.
So culminating all these, you know, collecting all these efforts and connections we have built over the course of time, recently we started Dark Sky Nepal. It is a collective effort that we have been doing since 2007, keeping all the people together from the globe, not only from Nepal, sharing our beauty of the night sky. Here we came with an idea of having the Dark Sky Initiative. Dark Sky Nepal basically works to preserve the night, night sky and also support people through advocacy, outreach, and conservation activities. Recently, we managed to support some initiatives which are working for the biodiversity. For example, we all know that these days it's pretty hard to see uh, bat, owl, you know, these are like kind of uh, not that visible in the major cities. We used to have that during our child days. I think this is where we can work together to create a better place for not only for humans, but also for all the animals and birds and living beings in this planet Earth. Let's switch back to uh, the education part. Imagine a scenario where we can leverage, you know, we can the harnessing the astronomical knowledge for the socio-economic development in the countries like Nepal, for connecting rural areas to the, you know, urban cities like Kathmandu. We take this astronomical knowledge to connect and inspire people for science education and young minds. Astronomy is not about only stars and galaxies. We use these to inspire them and give a broader perspective. You know, everyone says, OK, Nepal, we don't have resources, and we don't have money to build a good you know, lab. I would say we have the biggest lab in, in the Earth, or for us, the sky, and it's still there. According to this research in 2016 by a group of people from Italy, Germany, and the US, more than 80% of the world population cannot see Milky Way from their cities due to light pollution. At least we are among 20% who can enjoy the sky. And two-thirds of the people can enjoy One-third of humanity cannot see the Milky Way from the globe. But we can do that. So that's our open lab for us. So we're using that open lab to inspire young generation to promote science education in the country, not only in Nepal, but in other countries as well, we, whom we are collaborating. It gives you a sense of you know, being who you are and to work further for your career path. We are using this astronomy as a tool to inspire students, young minds, you know, to give a different perspective, bars I view of different career perspective that can achieve in you know Nepal and abroad. So basically, it's just getting them out of the box as possible from the traditional practice. I remember this photo from you know the NAST, Nepal Academy of Science and Technology. I was fixing the telescope to help participants enjoy uh, the comet scene that time, and you can see the curious. Phase and I, I, mean, I, I may be difficult to be recognized in this photo. It's quite old from 2009. This is one of the recent photos that we did from a program in Biratnagar. You can see the curious mind here, and this is how we are using astronomy to inspire people. They have sundial in hand, the compass, and they are interested to know how this clock works. It's not an expensive uh, you know, device, but still, it managed to inspire and ignite their curiosity for the innovations. I hope they will be able to do something you know, in the field of science, technology, and innovation in future. This is another picture, as I said. I travel across the globe to share what I know in astronomy, and this was in Brazil. There was an international conference where different people were joining from different countries in, in the South America. and they were you know, provided workshops. So I said, okay, I want to do a paper satellite workshops to you and voluntarily join these people in my workshop. They enjoyed it. Here also, I used the power of astronomy to inspire and ignite curiosity among people. And those teachers, basically they are teachers, to go back to their classrooms to inspire the young minds. We are using astronomy as a key to promote science education. You know, it gives a very broader pictures, but there are also challenges as well. 
when we go to the field for outreach and education, one of the questions we always encounter is, is astronomy and astrology the same? This is the hardest point for us to you know, help people to understand. Another thing is that, you know, for the mobility. So it's pretty hard to move around if I need to travel to Nepal in different parts of Nepal. It's, it's quite complex because of our complex terrain to move around. And also to abroad, of course, the expensive tickets, right? <laughs> it's quite uh, difficult. It's kind of some limitation and challenges for uh, moving around. Also, when we talk about the dark sky and light pollution, people say that, you know, what do we do if we turn out, you know, turn off the lights? How do we walk around? So I always say that, you know, maintaining dark sky doesn't mean to turn off everything and walk in the dark. It's a, you know, the responsible use of the light, the artificial light, without disturbing the night life or you know, creating much glow in the sky. Another challenge is that when we go to the schools and different places, they say, okay, for astronomy, we need devices, right? Telescope, binoculars. But we have the open lab. So most of the time when I go to school, when I go to school and colleges, I tell them, we have open lab. So we don't need telescopes and binoculars to start astronomy. We have the sky and we have eyes, so we can do a lot with it. So I basically promote naked eye observations there. And most of the places we found telescopes and binoculars as well, but they are not used before. So we encourage them to use that and utilize as far as possible. So it's time to look into the sky, get inspired, and understand the power, boundless powerness, the potential of the astronomy to inspire young minds. I think we can work together in this cosmic adventure and inspire more people to do their passion to profession. Thank you.